Well, hello there. Well, let me say Happy New Year. Uh, I do dearly and sincerely apologize for my brief absence from YouTube, but I am officially back. I will say that I have been in the laboratory of prayer and fasting, um, as well as doing some things behind the scene with my mentoring program. And I'm going to be sharing some of the things that I've shared in that group. Some of the things I kind of wanted to test um, with a control group before I release to the general public. Sort of have an idea of what to expect and sort of work all of the kinks out of it before I give it to just the general public in large. So you didn't have to go through what some of the other ones were fortunate enough to go through and I think they would probably all agree and so you get the finished product so there's some exciting things that I'm going to have coming up down the road um, very soon um, I'm going to go over something tonight that I think is so important um, one of the most um, significant takeaways from what I've noticed over the past few months past few weeks um, and that is something that I call hybrid fasting yes so in the process of, of this mentoring I've developed something that I call hybrid fasting um, and let me give you the rationale behind that fasting has a way of creating a spiritual fire that prevents the enemy from getting too close to you the enemy sees in the spirit realm that there is a fire that comes from some Christians and maybe a smoke that comes from other, if anything at all, honestly. And when you are fasting, that fire increases. Um, and to make a very long story short, a dry fast produces the most firepower in the shortest amount of time in comparison to the other fast. And if you look at my, um, my video on fasting, I give 10 levels of fasting. But what I've discovered is that that dry fast, just one day, produces tremendous results from just one day of dry fasting. And so what I would try to do is try to master doing three days dry fast. And let me be honest with you, that's not a walk in the park. That's not easy. It's difficult to train yourself how not to eat when you have to walk by food all day long and walk by the refrigerator all day long. And so over the process of time, I kept praying and kept praying and kept praying. But what I've discovered is some of the other fasts, they produce the same firepower, but you just don't get it at the same pace. Now let me give you an example. If you take um, the wood from a tree, and you take um, chips of the wood that are wet and damp and you take charcoal and then you take charcoal that already has a lighter fluid in it. Which one of those do you think you're going to get to, to light the fastest? You're going to get the one that has the charcoal with the lighter fluid. It's going to start the fire faster. All of the other ones will eventually get to the same place, but it just takes a little longer so the different types of fast will eventually get you to that place depending on how long you're doing it because the issue that I ran into and a lot of other people have probably run into is we like fasting but sometimes it's like you can go on a fast for three days you get some victory then here comes the enemy again harassing you and so it's like a process that you have to continue to go through trying to figure out what do I really have to do to have freedom and to be honest with you my solution has been what I call hybrid fasting now let me explain that to you in a, a little bit more details and the reasoning behind it um, a few months back I went on a 70 day fast I fast every day to 6 o'clock p.m. and I would break the fast the mysterious thing was Somewhere deep into the days of that fast, I couldn't recollect when I was doing it. All of the warfare, all the crazy dreams, all the attacks, they stopped. I went into a season of peace and I didn't understand it. 
I've never experienced this before. To where every dream I had was either some revelation from God, some message from God, or God showing me something about somebody, or something that was going on in the world, and I was called to pray about it. So I'd enter into a dimension of peace. And so I tried to replicate that, and I went on the same fast again, fasting every day till 6 o'clock. But to my amazement, I wasn't getting the same results. I was still getting warfare attacks, um, all types of crazy dreams. And I had to ask God, well, what is it? Why is it that this is happening to me this way? And I asked the Lord a very simple question. I said, when will the attacks stop? And there's a chart that I have um, on YouTube of all of those fasts, the level 10s. And immediately the Holy Spirit put a chart in front of me. And in this chart, there were three columns. The first was level 1 through 10 fast, how many days you're fasting. And the next column, the third column, was when the dreams will fall off or when the attacks will stop. And I could tell by the fast that I was on, which I was fasting every day till 6 o'clock, I immediately saw the one that I was on. And it said that the evil dreams and the attacks will stop. On the 42nd day like yeah 42 days in, and I'm only like 12 days and I'm like oh my god really <laughs> and I was me being an analytical person I'm trying to calculate well why is this that way so it's interesting that when I started tabulating and calculating it what I did was I noticed the 42nd day but what happens at the 42nd day the 42nd day is the beginning of the seventh week. You see, seven times six is 42. So at the 42nd day, it was like six days I battled, or six weeks I was in warfare. But when I entered into the seventh week, the warfare ceased. There was a resting period that I went through um, for that seven week. And so I kind of start tabulating. Um, you know, mathematical equations on how God was thinking in terms of the time period. And I used this mathematical equation that I can't think of right now off the top of my head. But it kind of came up with a formula on how to take different types of fasts and come up with the same effects by mixing a level one fast, maybe with a level four fast, and getting results faster. And that way I came up with sort of a hybrid fast. Now this, what I'm going to share with you, it's going to be at the bottom. So you can click on the link and get it because it's going to be a little tricky the way it works. So let me give you an example um, of two types of fasts. And I'm only going to share, well, let me give you three. I'll give you three types of fasts. And I'm only going to share three because these are the three that I think are going to be the most effective for you. Because the reality is, if you truly want peace and you want to go to a realm to where this foolishness that you've been facing with warfare and all that stops, then it cannot be a short-term commitment. It has to be a long-term commitment. And when I say long-term commitment, it has to be a lifestyle. So, um, I'll share with you what I mean in just a second. All right? Um, the hybrid fast works this way. For an example... Um, one particular fast that I, I got from um, a man of God that used to be a Satanist he's a, he's a man of God now and he mentioned a type of fast that he went on when he wanted to go into the, the occult that he was trying to join the person that recruited him gave him a set of instructions. I want you to listen to this because this is the child of the devil that I'm about to give you this information concerning. He's a man, a powerful man of God in Nigeria now. He says the man that initiated him told him he had three things he had to do. Is number one, he could not eat as long as the sun was shining outside. So he had to fast from sun up to sundown. Number two, he could not sleep as long as the sun was shining, which means he couldn't take a nap. 
He could only sleep when it was dark. All right? And number three, he could not have sex. Okay? So those three things. He couldn't eat as long as the sun was shining, so he had to fast from sun up to sundown. He could not sleep as long as the sun was shining from sun up to sundown. And he couldn't engage in any sexual activity when he was a single man. But here's the catch. He had to do that for six months. Let that sit in. Here is a person who's being initiated into witchcraft, being told that you have to go on a consecration period for six months. And here is a child of God who's trying to get delivered from something, who's throwing a temper tantrum because they have to go on a fast for three days. <laughs> so now, so I wanted to point that out to you, that the children of the devil, they laugh at the children of God because we don't understand the commitment that it takes to operate in a true realm of power. It's a lifetime commitment. It's a long-term commitment to where you have to make a commitment to do those things that bring power to you. So, one of the things that I suggest to people, and you know you have a lot of people who are, just can't fast, according to their mindset. Um, and one of the things that I suggested to some of the people in the group was, you fast either from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., or from sunrise to sunset. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a, a, a month in another religion where they are required to fast an entire month. Does anybody, you know, know anything about that? Where the, that entire religion worldwide is required to do a fast for an entire month, where they must eat when before the sunrise and after the sun sets. So that's the first fast that you can consider doing. You still get to eat, but the catch is you need to make a commitment to do it for at least six months. Okay? That's number one. And I'll show you how the hybrid fasting works. So you could just, just do that. You know, if you have health issues and you need to go consult with your doctor, as we love to say here in the United States, please consult with your doctor. Um, then that's one option. So what I did was I devised another one. And it's really a 36-hour fast. A 36-hour fast would be if I started at midnight on a Sunday night. I would go all the way on Monday, not eat. And I would advise people to drink water. Let me tell you why. It's better to upgrade a fast to go from not drinking water to going dry, then they have to downgrade the fast because you bit off of more than you could chew and swallow. So at midnight, well, let's put it like this. 11.59 Sunday night, and it's midnight, which is officially Monday morning, you start the fast. And you fast all the way past the sunrise, all the way past the sunset, all the way past midnight into Tuesday. And at Tuesday at noon, you break the fast. And at noon, you break the fast, and you have 12 hours to take in whatever you're going to take in. All right? 12 hours to take in whatever you're going to take in. And at midnight again, boom, you repeat that cycle. You do it again. 36 hours and you break the fast again on noon at Thursday. You got 12 hours. And then you break the fast again at noon on Saturday and Sunday. So you're only not eating on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Totally not eating on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And you're eating only after noon in a 12 hour window on Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And that's with or without water. But 
you have to make up uh, um, um, in your mind that you're going to do this for a sustained period of time. And when I say a sustained period of time, I'm talking about at least 40 days. Yes, let me repeat it. Let me make it easy. At least 42. Because what's going to happen is you get into a phase of where the power of God is going to be on display in your life. And you will understand that it's necessary to do it. You know, I was counseling um, a gentleman from Africa and he was battling some, you know, some, some, some serious things. And he started fasting every day to six o'clock. And by the time I talked to him and we started conversing back and forth over a few days, he hit that 42 day mark. And he says, strangely, he had been fasting every day to six o'clock. He says, I can sleep now. With no, no bothers. And he says, if this is what it takes for me to have peace, then I'll just eat every day after 6 o'clock. And so that's the thing that, that many of us as children of God need to recognize. That we have to be willing to do what is necessary in order to walk in the dimension of power that we need to walk in to fulfill our destinies. Now, I'm going to share one more with you. And I'm going to be honest with you. I wish I had known years ago what I'm about to tell you. This is three-day dry fast every week. Watch this. But the good news is it doesn't have to be three consecutive days. It can be a Monday. Wednesday and a Saturday. Next week, it could be a Sunday, a Tuesday, and a Thursday. If you know you have a wedding that you're going to Saturday, then it could be a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Thursday. You have the flexibility of moving it around. And let me tell you, the promise that I got from God on this is if you would do this and commit to this for six months, you will be amazed. And when I tell you the first weekend the warfare started turning off it started switching down downgraded and just one weekend so I've given you three options me personally I would take the dry fast one personally that's for your decision for you to make and I've made a commitment to do it for at least six months and to see you know what the Lord does because I believe already, you know, I'm just a few weeks in, I'm already seeing the results. Because if you've been listening to my videos and you've been following me, you know very well that when you go on a fast, as soon as you come off the fast, what happens? The enemy sits back, he waits for your fire to, to sort of simmer down and he attacks. But now, you know, let's see what type of, you know, torch or flame I can build over the next six months by doing this and I would encourage you you know to take the initiative to do it the same but you have to decide how you want to set that up and I know that 36 hour one seems a little strange but you can do that with water now I'm not going to tell you to do the, the three day with water you, you get the same results I doubt it but you will get some results and if I'm going to train myself you know to go three days um, a week without water uh, and the key is you have to have an adequate amount of water intake the day before you go on a fast, which is key. And one of the things that I, I've learned through uh, my own research and fasting is the human body can only excrete about a liter of water an hour. So it's not wise to try to ingest more than one liter of water an hour. But if you systematically give yourself water throughout the day and what the Lord has shown me is you need to take in a minimum minimum of 6 to 4 ounces a day a minimum if you're not drinking 6 to 4 ounces of water a day was what the Lord told me you're not even meeting the minimum requirement and what I've learned is the way the Lord was explaining to me he was showing me these red cups that I had bought from Costco's or Sam's Club one of them that 
you have to drink a minimum of four of these a day. But if you know you're going to drive fast the next day, then you drink a minimum of eight of these. And if you want to push yourself, you know, to go a little further, then you need to take in more of these. So I'm giving you the tabulations that the Spirit gave me. And when I tell you, it works fine. That when I know that I'm going to go on a fast tomorrow and I start intaking water in intervals of throughout the day, the next day I go through the day feeling fine. I don't miss the water. I don't miss the food. And but the fire of God shows up in my prayer. And it's so important that when you do select the fast, that you need to pray during the fasting hours. You don't just go on a fast and continue to do what you've always done and not pray. You're just on a diet. You know, you're going to lose some weight, you know, as you probably can see I have, okay? You're going to lose some weight, but the purpose of it is not to lose weight, but to rather, you know, position yourself the way you can do greater things for God. And so, that's what I wanted to share with you in this particular video. And I got a lot of stuff coming your way. All right. So I know that, 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 as, that one of the songs says, the wait is over. It's your time. So it's time that I'm going to begin to share some of the things with you and um, some of the exciting things that have come out of this mentoring experiment that I have been truly blessed and amazed by. And I probably will give a, you know, a, a brief summary of some of the things that I have seen miraculously happen. And when I tell you that the angelic activity was off the charts, literally, <laughs> it still is. So those are some things that I want to share and had some more exciting things coming up. And for now, um, I guess I say welcome. I welcome myself back. And I look forward to sharing a lot more things with you coming very soon. All right. See you in the next video.